Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, and watching. I do appreciate it. I hope you're doing really well today. I am back in Luminar 4 and continuing my series on the Canvas tools. I already did the, the Crop and Rotate. I already did Eraser. And today, video 3, that would be 3, I guess, not 6, video 3 of this little mini-series, if you want to call it that, on the Canvas tools, is, of course, Clone and Stamp, which is the next one in order. So we're going to hop into that. Um, I mentioned this in the Erase video, which you can catch there if you would like. Uh, but some people consider Erase and Clone and Stamp the same thing. Now, the aim is the same, and that is get rid of something or replace it with something else. Um, but the the uh, the way it's done is different. So in the Eraser, what it is is you're basically painting over something and then telling Luminar, all right, figure it out. Uh, take care of it. You're driving and get rid of that thing and replace it with whatever you think is the right thing to replace it with. So... In other words, other than painting over what you want to get rid of, you don't have any control. The opposite of that is clone and stamp. As the name implies, you're in charge of it. And as the name implies, you're cloning a component of the photo and then stamping it somewhere else. So in other words, you're making a copy of the pixels and then you're brushing them or painting or pasting them in another piece of the photo. So as I said, you're in control of that, which in other words, you get to choose. And to me, that's really the difference. Eraser is Luminar chooses and clone and stamp, you choose. So let's get into it. Okay, so I have this photo I took in Wales. I love Wales, so gorgeous. Um, and honestly, a quick sloppy edit. I just hit a few filters just to brighten it up a little bit, give it a little bit of color pop. I actually don't think I would edit it this way, but regardless, here we go. Um, and to get to Canvas Tools, you go up here where the Canvas Tools are, and then you click on Clone and Stamp to launch the tool. Okay, once you're in the tool, you'll have this little bullseye, which is basically what you're going to be painting with, um, and that is how you set the source. You'll see it says here, click to set the source, and so we're going to get into that in a second. Up here you have size, so this is the size of what you're uh, cloning and stamping with. I generally leave it pretty small. Um, you also have softness and opacity. I generally don't mess with them. I prefer my softness to be uh, at 100%, so it's a softer edge, and I leave opacity alone. Just personal preference. Anyway, you're clicking to set the source. Here's a couple things I like to think about, and I recommend when using Clone and Stamp. Number one, go slow. Number two, make very small brush strokes. Uh, and I'll point that out uh, and, and show you why in a moment. Uh, and number three, zoom in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom into this. And we're going to start with the photo here. We've got these three ladies, I guess they are, um, perhaps that are crossing this bridge. And I don't really want them in my photo. So what makes sense is to just clone and stamp some of this tree business that's back here in place of the ladies. So that's where it says click to set the source. So what I do is I go and click the option button. And I'm going to start right here. And I'm going to say option. And I'm going to click that with my mouse. And now you can see that now I've got sort of two cursors. The left one that seems like it's in uh, still, right? This right one is me moving my cursor. Um, the left one, the bullseye, the original one, that's the source. However, once you start painting, the source moves. So you'll see that in a moment. And that's why I said make small brush strokes because you'll end up running over something that you don't want to run over and start copying the wrong pixels into the, uh, the place that you want to put um, other pixels, right? So um, make small brush strokes, set the source with the option key, and then you just start painting. Uh, this is where you can increase or decrease the size of your brush. I'm going to leave it small like that, and I'm going to come over here, and you will see now as I start moving my cursor uh, to the right, what's happening is um, my source point on the left is moving as well. And that's why I say take small brush strokes, because if I keep going like this, eventually I'm going to get some other lady's head or something, and it's going to start painting. You can see her hand was painted there and there, because I'm going further right. My source is beginning to pull from pixels that I've already um, tried to cover up. So what I mean by um, making small brush strokes is just that. You want to avoid that. So I come back. All I do is hit Option again, and then I come back and pick another piece of the tree and then just come back and make some small brush strokes. So I'm just kind of going over here. I'm going to hit option again. And I'm just going to keep doing that until I get exactly what I want out of this photo. Um, so uh, I'm just coming over here. And I'm going to grab some of these more yellow ones, paint them here. 
and I'm just making very small strokes. And I'm also, if you notice, I'm just kind of going left to right, right to left. I'm kind of mixing it up. Um, and the other reason is that, and that looks pretty good. I mean, let's be honest, right? There's before and there's after, and that's zoomed in. The other reason I make small brush strokes is not just that you paint over things, but also you gotta be careful about patterns. I make small brush strokes and I move the source point. That's another thing to keep in mind is change your source point frequently, depending on the thing that you're masking. But in something like this, change your source point a fair amount because what you don't wanna do is um, have the same exact tree look like it's been copied and pasted, basically, which is what you're doing. Um, so I think I've done a pretty good job. You may disagree, and in fact, you might come back and say, well, I want a little bit more of this yellow here. I wanna put a little bit of that over there just to mix it up. Uh, maybe I want some of that over in here just to make that a little bit more green. Um, you can mess around with it and continue to iterate. Um, and if you wanna undo it, you can just say edit undo, or it's command Z, I guess, on a Mac. Probably something Z on a Windows, I don't know. Um, but that'll undo your most recent strokes. If you do a stroke and it's terrible, just Command-Z or undo it. Um, but these are all built into this, so there's not an individual little dot that I can go adjust later. Once you bake it in, you're kind of baking it in. Um, but I think it's done a great job, and that's really how you do it. So just keep in mind small brush strokes, frequent brush strokes, change your source point around, uh, and a small brush, that sort of thing. Um, it also works fine on things like um, brickwork, right? So I've got this uh, work here. Let's say I want to brush over some of this, and I don't really want to see um, that same, uh, I'm just making some random kind of things here because I'm wanting to erase this flag. Um, when you get down into this section here, there's a bit more discernible pattern. Up here where I was, there's no real discernible pattern other than it's kind of splotchy with like... Um, you know, moss or lichens or whatever kind of growing on that bridge. But down here, you can see some of the, uh, uh, the, the more defined shapes of the bricks. So you gotta be careful because, especially if you're doing like a brick wall, which is very specific and very geometric, if you're cloning and stamping something off of a brick wall into another part, you gotta get that pattern just right or it may look weird because you might have, you know, brick, 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 and then half a brick starts and then brick, 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 and then half a brick, and, and it starts to overlap and look weird. Um, we're gonna try it here just now, just to see. Um, let's see, how about I take some of this brick right here, and I'll come over here and paint it, just to kind of see what we end up with. That looks okay, it doesn't look terrible. I'm gonna say brick here. Uh, and this is another example of where I would just alter your source points. I'm just gonna do that a few times, and kind of see what I come up with. Um, I mean, I think it's kind of working. There are gonna be those of you that are gonna probably look at it and say, you know, hey Jim, you totally missed this or that, but let's be honest here, right? We're all friends. That looks pretty good. Um, is it perfect? No, but um, you know, if you look at that and now you look at that, you can't really tell that the flag has been taken away, I don't think, nor can you tell that the people have been taken away and if you are not watching a video where you saw me do this and knew that I do it uh, or did it, and you're looking at this photo now, you might look at that brick and just say, there's brick, that's a brick bridge. Cool, man, I wish I could go see that bridge. You would not say, it looks like he cloned and stamped a bunch of stuff off of that bridge. And I think the reason why is, in both cases, the tree and the bridge is because there's no discernible pattern. Even here where there's a little bit of a pattern in the brick, because I move things, uh, source points around, by the way, keep in mind, there's also color variations here. You gotta keep that in mind when you're cloning and stamping because you're trying to sell it. You're trying to say, this is what I saw. Um, you're not trying to say, this is what I covered up. Um, so keep in mind color and variation, texture variation, shape variation, and any lines like uh, where the mortar is around these uh, bricks or the rocks, I guess I'm calling them bricks, but you get the point. However, like I said, if you didn't know that I was doing that and had done this, you might look at this photo now, or particularly that portion of the photo and say, how could I tell? Because I don't think you can. So that's how clone and stamp works. Um, I'm gonna back back out and go fit to screen. I'm not gonna do the whole bridge because we'd be here forever and it's really boring, but it's a great thing to do with this sign. In fact, I'm gonna do that sign real quick. I'm just gonna get a little tree business and cover up that sign because I don't want that sign in my way. 
That looks pretty good. You got a person in the, in the grass over here. You got this other stuff. You can just do this all day. And in fact, I've done it, not all day, but you, I've, done, I've spent many a, a lengthy session, I should say, cloning and stamping things in photos. Um, and it's worth it. Um, it takes time. Take your time. Slow down. Small brush. Small brush strokes. Move your source point. Pay attention to the details, the textures, the lines, all that stuff, and the colors. Uh, but you can do an absolutely fine job. And now that you'll look at the tree, you look at this over here where the sign was, don't notice it. Over here where the people were, can't tell. Here are the brick, looks like a brick bridge, and you're done. When you're done, just hit done, and it will drop in and complete your edits. Again, you're baking those edits in, so you don't go back and say, oh, let me grab that thing and undo it. You've, you've baked it in effectively, and it does create a new layer. So here we go. If I go up to layers, I have a clone and stamp layer, just like in my erase video where you had an erase uh, image layer, you now have a clone and stamp layer. If I deactivate the layer, the stuff comes back. When I reactivate the layer, you'll see the stuff disappears. That's how it works, my friends. Super powerful, super easy, and frankly, super fun to do. But that's how it works. I wanted to give you a deep dive on that. This is episode three of my deep dive series on the uh, canvas tools. Next one up will be lens and geometry. That'll be coming soon. So thank you for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do like, share, comment. Let me know what you think about this kind of stuff. And then go have fun editing photos. Use some clone and stamp, get in there and kick it around and have a good time with it. And um, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. I'll see you really soon, my friends. Have a great day. Take care and adios.